Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 16. If you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 1, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is our last video for Chapter 1. We're doing a word problem, all right? Uh, we did one last video. Here's the steps, uh, the directions, like you'll see just on a test, and here's our word problem. If a theater owner needs 1,500 total seats, and wants the main floor to have 35 rows and 20 f uh, with 25 seats in each and the balcony to have 25 rows. How many seats must be in each balcony row? <laughs> wow, you know, when I read that right off the bat, I'm like, I have no idea. But I know the trick to solving application word problems is to methodically go through the problem, extract every detail, put it into the spreadsheet with labels, and once you have all the information here, then you usually can see your way through the problem. All right, so first bit of information, total seats. So total seats tab, 1,500 and wants the main floor to have 35 rows. Okay, so main floor number of rows, 35, 35, enter, with 25 seats in each, seats in each uh, seats in each main floor row, 25, enter, notice that tab and, and then enter here, it's kind of, it's built in to enter data in this form. Okay, and the balcony to have 25 rows. Okay, so so balcony number of rows, and that's going to be 25. Hmm. All right, and then our goal. How many seats must be in each balcony row? So So I was fine. I'm going to have a number of seats in each balcony row. All right. Um, so then, you know, you get all the information here and you just kind of rack your brain. Um, and we have total seats, rows, floor. So look at this. Okay, I got it. So we'll, I don't really know I'm going to solve this, but I know that this is one bit of information I can calculate. Number of rows, seats in each row, so we can calculate the total seats on the main floor. All right, so I'm going to come down here, do our same trick we did before. We've written all the information up here. I don't want to rewrite it, so I'm going to use a formula, Control-Enter. I'm going to drag this down. Now, when you drag down and then over, I know some people when they're learning, they like to go like this, uh, and they're trying to drag over, but it won't work. It's always a two-step process. So you drag down, let go, and then re-grab the fill handle and drag it over. All right, so now we can see, oh, that wasn't correct equals this one. I want the this two pieces of information. Control Enter, drag it down. Notice you don't have to delete the stuff in the cell first. Um, you just put a formula copy down and it automatically replaces it. Now I can find the total seats on main floor. Okay. And this is multiplying. So equal sign, up arrow times up, up arrow, enter. Now I'm going to do uh, some borders here, like we did in our counting statements a few uh, videos ago. And we did some borders in last video, too. Because notice, these two numbers are raw number inputs, right? Even though they're from up here, they're raw number inputs. And this is a formula. So on that cell, I'm going to highlight it, Control-1 to open up format cells, or this one, but Control-1 whatever tab you are, make sure it's the border. And then we already have lines there, but I want a thick line on the top. Click OK. So this came from accounting, but this is common in business. What it means, that line means, I just did some calculation right here on the numbers above. All right. So now we have all the seats on the main floor, right? Got it. Now, this is total seats. So the difference between these two 
will give us all the seats in a balcony, all right? Even though I may not know exactly how I'm gonna solve this yet, I know I can calculate that number and it makes sense that I would need that number. So I'm gonna say equals this, control enter, and then copy it over. Ah, now I get it. Th that's all of them, subtract this, uh, and we'll get all the seats in the balcony. So total seats in balcony. And ah, the difference. So equals up arrow minus up arrow up arrow. I'm going to control enter. I'm going to do the same thing as I did up here because notice I just did a calculation on the two numbers above. Control one, thick border right there. Click OK. All right. Um, so now I have total seats in the balcony. And the only other bit of information I have is rows. Ah, that's it. Well, if that's all the seats, and this is rows, I simply divide the two, and it tells me how many are in each row. All right, so this is our goal, right? Number, in fact, I can uh, yeah, come up here, and I type this up here. I don't want that fine, so in edit mode, I'm going to copy. Enter, paste, control V. And now I'm going to say, oh, no, actually, that's going to be our, I need to move this down here. That's our goal, right? We still have one other bit of information we need from up here. So I'm going to equals balcony, number of rows, control Enter, drag it over. All right, and then here's our final calculation. Equals, oh, all the seats divided by the number of rows. Control Enter, and I'm immediately going to, I'm going to put that line on the top right there, but also this is the bottom line number, so I'm going to put a double line. Control 1. Thick line means I did some calculation. Double line means that. All right, um, now I'm going to answer this in uh, words, and given, if only I could type, given <laughs> balcony row is 25. Enter. Now, I, I definitely want to check. I don't need to do any number formatting. I mean, I could put a comma here, right? But I don't really need to do any number formatting. This is all numbers we're counting. But I do want to check. Now, let's think about this. How could we do it? Um, total seats. Ah, uh, I, I, So check this out. Here's our first calculation, right? Multiplying. And then this calculation was taken this minus that. We actually could do that all in one cell. And guess what? We could multiply these two and then subtract that. And the order of operations would do the multiplying first and then subtract that. Now, that number, then that 625, is divided by that 25. So I'm actually going to get all this information and put it down here to check. Equals this, Control Enter. I'm going to drag it down 4 and over, increase the column width. I actually could decrease the column width there and then increase the column width here. And now, um, I already have that over here, so I'm going to go like that. That's our goal, right? And all of this, control to hi highlight like this little L, and then boop. Now, we'll just take this one step at a time. I'm going to try and get this number first. So I'm going to say equals this times up arrow. That's multiplying. Control Enter, you see it's 875. F2, but yeah, um, what I really want is this. So I'm going to put, my, put this in edit mode, F2. That puts the cursor at the end. And then click right there. What I really want is that minus all of this. So I'm going to click there. Notice when you have improper stuff in a formula, the cell references turn black, right? Because 
that's no, there's no such thing as E14, E15. But as soon as I type the minus, it comes back to life. This is actually called range finder. This is a color coding that helps you uh, audit and make sure the cell, the correct cells are in the formula. All right, let me hit Control Enter. Ah, and look at that. That's our number. Now, I, my goal is to divide it by 25, and I have that 25 right there. So I'm going to F2. Now, what happens? Let's just try this. Divide by 25. I mean, if you're fluent with your order of operations, you can you know, look at this and see it's not going to work. But let's just say we forgot for a moment. You're like, oh, oh no, what did I do wrong? F2, and then look at it. Oh, right, right, right. That absolutely, this whole thing has to be calculated before the division right there. So we have to put parentheses around this. That's how we did it here. And by the way, well, let's see if this works. All right, so it does. By the way, you know, a lot of times even the, the people who are good at solving word problems, doing math, Excel, maybe you can't do this thing uh, at first. Maybe you really do want to step through it step by step. That helps you kind of uh, develop a method of solving. But once you solve it, you know, this gave us an idea how to do this and check it. Not only that, but if it was a regular calculation, you might do it the longhand way. And then uh, subsequent times, you know, you've developed this shorter method. All right, uh, so there we go. That's our second word problem and uh, our last video for chapter one. Uh, we'll see you next chapter.